So I want to start by talking about what we did last week. Um, I'm hoping you guys got some work done on Tuesday. I was always sick of you guys remember, but I was looking at your little memo sheets. It looks like you guys hopefully had a pretty good lesson just trying to play some catch up. Um, I want to help you guys with processing um, how to tackle these sort of questions. Um, so I kind of want to spend a little bit um, – Sorry, my brain is not fully functioning because I'm still not 100%. Um, I want you guys to have some time to figure out and understand um, how to get information from these different spectras. I'm going to start talking about the CMMR today because I think by talking about the CMMR, it'll put the other two things into context. So that's kind of my hope for today. I know you guys are probably not feeling ready to move on, but I'm hoping by moving on, it'll actually help you understand the story a bit better. So if you guys remember last week, we looked at question number one for the combination questions. We looked at the IR spectra, and from the IR spectra, we figured out that we had an alcohol. Are we okay with that? All right. Then I said, we'll skip the CMMR, and I will talk about that later. And later is now today. Um, to give you guys some context of what that tells us, we'll spend two lessons on this, because there's two bits of information I need to tell you about CMMR. And then we started looking at the mass spectra. Um, again, we're going to spend probably two lessons on this because I want to first talk about the big picture idea and then talk about the smaller details, which is the fragments. Uh, the main takeaway thing that we found out here is the base peak, which is our 100% peak. So that's our most common fragment. And then also the molecular ion, which is our uh, the molecule and the mass of the molecule. That is really important because that tells us how many carbons are there. So if you guys remember from the notes from last week, I'm just going to point this out. So we did question number one. We talked about what we figured out from the IR spectra. We figured out that there was no carbonyl. Uh, we also figured out that there was a uh, deep peak. I should actually call it a trough because it's going under um, there. It's around 3,500, uh, but it doesn't have that double peak there. So from that two bits of information, I can tell that that's probably going to be an alcohol as my function group. I've ruled out ketone and aldehyde uh, because there's no carbonyl. I've also ruled out amide and carboxylic acid because there's no carbonyl. I've also ruled out that there's no amine there because it doesn't have that double peak that I'm looking for. And the shape is a lot deeper than what I would expect for an amine. Um, just a reminder of what we would expect for an amine. So this is what my alcohol looks like. This is what an amine looks like. So we can tell based off of the trough that we're getting, um, which of the two that it is. Are we okay with that? I saw a lot of you guys wrote down that you put as your goal to work on the GIM kit just to feel confident with the function group, which is good. All right, keep going. Okay. The other thing that we figured out was looking at the um, largest peak, which is our rightmost peak. That's our molecular ion. It tells me the mass of the molecule. So we started with a basic alcohol. We figured out the mass of this guy, which is 31. The way we figured that out was we took the 12 from the carbon, we took the 16 from the oxygen, and then we have three hydrogens, which is three. I added up that together, and that was 31. So that's how I figured out the first bit here. Um, nice little hint is that I do give you common fragments and their masses. And if you look 31, you can see that you have the CH2OH, which is what I drew over here. CH2OH. Are we okay with that? So I first got that 31, and then what I was trying to figure out is how many carbons do I need to add until I am one away from the molecular mass, which in this case was 116. Are we okay with that? Now, the reason why I was playing the add 14 game is because when I have an internal carbon like this, the carbon is 12, and then I add the two hydrogens, so 12 plus 2, 14. So if I add 14, that's adding another carbon chain, or sorry, sorry, another carbon link, I should say. So we started with the 31, I added 14, I got 45, add another 14, 59, add another 14, uh, 73, add another 14, 87, add another 14, 101, add another 14, I'm at 115. 
So basically what that means is that I'm now hit the end of the carbon and I'm only one away because what's going to happen is at the end of the chain, I'm going to have another hydrogen there to finish the carbon molecule. And that's where that plus one's coming from. And so now I have the hydrogen added and I have 116. I then go through and I add how many times did I add 14 plus my original molecule. So one, two, three, four, five, six plus my original over here, seven. So this molecule has seven carbons and the functional group is an alcohol. Are we okay with that so far? All right. For your do now then, I want you guys to think about what we were talking about with organic chemistry, and that was isomers. So I want you guys to have a chance to draw five isomers on a piece of paper um, that could fit the criteria of having seven carbons, 16 hydrogens, and one oxygen, so an alcohol. Does that make sense? Do you guys want me to draw you one for an example? Alright, so for an example, let me draw you two isomers, so that way you guys have to find some more. There are actually, I think, 78 isomers you could draw because of what Google says. I'm not going to ask you to draw all 78 because that is ridiculous. If you want to do that over the weekend for your homework, go for it, but it's redundant. <laughs> Alright, so... My molecular formula is C6H, uh, six times, no, sorry, seven. C7H16O. Agree? Okay. Some things I should do before, so this is coming from question number one. Out of our combination questions. We already know from question number one that we have an OH, so I want you to draw something that has an alcohol. The other thing is we look at the ratio between the carbon and the hydrogen. I see that it's times two plus two, so there is no double bond. Okay? So from that information, there's lots of different isomers you can draw. I'll give you guys two as an example, and then I want you guys to find five more. So first thing I like to do when I'm trying to figure out the isomer is I start with a straight chain, and I'm starting with seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm okay right now if you guys just want to do shorthand and not have to put in all the hydrogens right now. Um, that is fine. It's up to you. The way I like to start off with this is I like to um, put my function group at the very first carbon and then move it down. So if I move it, so that's my first isomer. If I was going to name it, I would have hept and one all. I like to name it just to make sure I don't accidentally make the same molecule twice. That one will meet the requirements because if I put in the hydrogens, it should have 16 hydrogens, there's one oxygen, there's seven carbons. Are we okay with that? All right, if I want to do another isomer of it, I would move the OH down one. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Move it down over here. I now do have a new isomer. This is hept and two all. Good. Once I've moved the isomer, or sorry, once I've moved the OH as many times as I can, there's going to be a point where if I move it any further, it's just going to recycle the carbon number. I can then start moving the carbons as branches. So again, I like to set it on carbon number one, one, two, three, four, five, six. So let's go six, one, two, three, four, five, six, OH here. And let's say I put the branch over here. That's now a new carbon. That would be... Uh, two methyl and then hex and one all. And then what I can do is I can move the carbon down one more. One, two, three, four, five, six. Move it down over here. Keep the OH here. Now I have three methyl. I already have four isomers, all right? I want you guys to find five isomers. You cannot use the four that I've already used, okay? The other thing is I will pass around a piece of paper for you guys to write down one of your five isomers. 
because I want to see collectively all the different versions we could have had. Okay? Oh, put that. Let me pause it. All right. Just want to move on, just so that way you guys have plenty of time to kind of digest the last bit of information. So, I didn't get one from everybody because I could see some of you guys needed some more time and weren't feeling too confident with sharing, and that's okay. Um, so, what I'm hoping you guys realize is that from the two bits of information I've given you so far, that it is an alcohol and there's seven carbons, there's actually lots of possible answers for this question. That's why we need to integrate in another spectra to help us narrow down our choices. And the one that I'm going to show you now today is the CMMR. Now there's going to be multiple bits of information for the CMMR. The first thing I just want to talk about is something called carbon environments. So that can help us give an idea of structure. So understanding carbon environments is really, really easy because all you need to do is note how many lines you see. So how many lines do you guys see? Three. So this tells me there are three carbon environments. So let me show you what I mean by carbon environments. Um, I'm going to choose a molecule that's symmetrical, so that way you guys can kind of see how you can have doubling up of carbon environments. And then um, I'll show you guys something that isn't symmetrical, so that way you can see how you can have more carbon environments. So it takes a while to kind of get this one down. So. I showed you guys um, one, two, three, four different molecules here, and then I went around to get some molecules from other people, and so far we have nine. So currently we have 13 different molecules to choose from that could potentially be the right answer. So what I want to show you guys is how do you then use the last spectra to figure out then which of these molecules is the right answer, and if you, in fact, do you have the right answer right now? So. When we're talking about carbon environments, I like this one here as my example because there's symmetry in this molecule, so we're going to use this one here. Um, what we're trying to think about is what is that carbon attached to, and is it unique, or are there other carbons that have that same structure? So when I'm looking at this molecule here, I'm basically thinking about what are all the things attached to that carbon, and is it unique to it? So when I look at this guy here, my first carbon environment, you see how this carbon has two hydrogens attached, the OH, and then this branch chain here. So that's the first carbon environment that I have. So I count that as one. Okay? I then go to this guy over here, and when I look at this guy, it is different from that first carbon. This carbon has two hydrogens like the first guy, but it has this chain here, the CH2OH, and it has this kind of branch chain here too. So is that carbon different from this carbon? Yes, it is. So that's carbon environment number two. Are we okay? This carbon over here, is this different from these other two? Yes. So that is my third carbon environment. Now I'm starting to look at some of the branches coming out. So this one over here, it has two hydrogens, it has a methyl, and then it has a carbon, which has an ethyl, and then it has the OH, which is two carbons away. So that's a new environment, correct? All right, so that's carbon four. Now, I want to look at this carbon here, and I want to see, does this carbon have the same setup as this carbon? So you see how this has the two hydrogens like this guy? This guy also has a methyl attached to it. This guy also, when you go up here to this carbon, has a um, two carbon chain. And you see how it's going to that three there. So this carbon and this carbon have the same environment. They have the exact same list. So if I was to write out a list, they would have the same thing. So both of those are sign number four because they have symmetry. And then when I look at this guy over here, three carbons, sorry, three hydrogens, three hydrogens. And then when I check the chain, this guy has this and this, and then this guy has the same setup. So these two have the same environment. So that's five carbon environments. So if I was to look on the um, CMMR data, this has five peaks. How many did you see on the... CMMR data, three peaks. 
So this is not the right answer. All right, let's look at another molecule to get some more examples. So this guy over here, I love to use this guy as an example because this one's a good seven. So I should probably have started this one because this one's actually easier to understand. <laughs> you gotta see a lot of it and then eventually it's gonna click. All right, this first carbon here, you see how it has the OH and two hydrogens? So that's the first carbon environment. This carbon over here, two hydrogens, but it is one away from the OH, and then it has a tail of one, two, three, four, five. So that's a different environment. So that's my second environment. This guy over here, you see how, even though it has the same setup, CH2, this is one carbon in between for the OH. See, one, two, and then the tail is one, two, three, four. So you see how this one's different from this one. So that's three. This one here, Four, five, six, and seven. Do you see how there's no symmetry in that molecule? So if this molecule was to show up on my CMMR, I would see seven peaks. All right, so we still haven't figured out our answer, have we? So some things to keep in mind when we are looking at the CMMR is you can use it as a hint to tell you how many carbons are there. However, it's not always going to match. So, if we look at the second example, I think I have it on a piece of paper, don't I? So, if you guys remember, this is question number two. And question number two we did talk about because we saw that there was a carbonyl. Agreed? And then we did the math and we saw that there's a peak at 60, or sorry, 86. Just pull up the document camera. So we had a peak at 86. And you see how that 86, when I did the math, I had 29, I added 14 each time. It told me it had five carbons. So when I then look at the CMMR, you see how this one only has three peaks. That tells me there must be symmetry in the molecule. So whenever the number of peaks does not match the number of carbons, you have some symmetry. So that way you can double count some of these carbons. Same with this guy that we did for question number one. There's only three peaks, so that tells me there's symmetry in the molecule. You guys need to think about isomers, and you need to think about, okay, what structural isomer could I have that would result in that number of peaks? So let me actually give you the answer, so hopefully you guys can kind of see what we're talking about. And from memory, when I worked it out, it was, I think, a five-carbon chain. One, two, three, four, five. The OH was here, and this carbons was there. Yeah. Is that supposed to be? One, two, three. Yep. So that was going to be your molecule for the answer. So that was one, two, three. So it's two, four, five, one, two, three, four. 2,4-dimethyl um, pent and 3-all. You don't need to name it. Oh, sorry. didn't realize I had that up. You don't need to name it in order to get the points. You just have to draw it. All right. This molecule here will meet the requirements, I believe. One, two, three. Yes, it does. Okay. So... What we're looking for is unique carbon environments. I personally like to see where the OH is as my starting point because that can help me look at symmetry in the molecule. What you guys should hopefully notice is that you see how there's methyl branches coming off a secondary a second carbon. So you go one, two, one, two. So you see how there's methyls coming off of a second carbon. So both of these and both of these, so these are all the same environment. That's environment number one. And then these two here, this one and this one, are the exact same setup. That's environment number two. And then this center carbon is environment number three. And that's going to be three peaks. All right, if you're not sure, are you guys okay with this? Or are you still kind of confused? I see some people kind of getting it, some people not. All right, 
The way I like to do to make sure I understand is the carbon environment's different is I like to list it out. So if I list out this carbon environment number one, And I think, what is attached to carbon environment number one? Well, when I look at it, I have three hydrogens. So we have H, H, and H. And then what I also have attached to it is CH, CH3, CH, OH, CH, CH3, CH3, like that. So those are the four things attached to that carbon. Agreed? When I look at this carbon here, does it have the exact same setup? So I see this CH has three hydrogens attached to it. I see that the carbon attached to that one is CH, CH. It has a methyl branch like that. It has a CH um, here with an OH. It has a CH attached to, oh, sorry, a CH3 and then another CH3. So you see how this one and this one have the same list. same list of things attached to it. If I looked at carbon environment number two, which is in green, this carbon here has a hydrogen. It has a uh, methyl and a methyl. And then it has this CH that has the OH, a CH2, sorry, CH with a CH3 and another CH3. So that's the list for that guy. And then when I check this carbon over here, does it have the same thing? One hydrogen, one hydrogen, two methyls, two methyls, and then a CH with the OH, a CH with two methyls attached to it. So you're looking to see, is there a repeat of structure? When I look at this guy over here, I see this one here, three hydrogens, like the first carbon environment. I see that it is attached to a CH. It's got a CH3, and then it's got the CHOH, CH, CH3, CH3. This guy over here, when I look at it, it has three hydrogens again. I look to see what it has attached to it. CH with a CH3, CH with an OH, CH with a CH3, and another CH3. So you're basically just looking to see if there's symmetry in the molecule and if you can double count an environment. And then the last carbon environment I should have probably chose another smaller molecule because it's quite complicated. I'm sorry guys. All right, when I look at this guy here, it has a hydrogen, it has an OH, and then it has a CH, CH3, CH3. And then also the same thing twice, because it's in the middle. So those three different carbon environments, because they have different things attached to it. When I look at something like this here, this here has seven carbon environments, because you can see each one of those, there's no symmetry in this molecule. So there's nowhere that I can cut the molecule where I have a mirror of itself. So each time I go down another carbon, it's a different distance away from the OH and has a different tail. So that's why each carbon in this one is in a unique environment. So that one has seven peaks. It just takes practice to learn them, unfortunately. Um, I don't know if I have a GIM kit for this. Let me check. All right, so this first one here, just wanted to give you guys an idea of carbon environments we're looking at it. So. 
what I see here is I have one, two, three, four, five carbons, and on carbon number two, I have an NH2, correct? I want to figure out carbon environments. Is there any symmetry in this molecule? No. So then how many carbon environments do I have? If I have no symmetry. Five. Because there's five carbons there. Yeah? Right. Here's another one. So I have one, two, three, four carbons. Is there any symmetry in that molecule? Where? Because of the double bond. So how many carbon environments would there be? Four. Do you see how? Let me draw them both on the board. Actually, I'll draw it on the doctor's camera. I am not teaching this very well. I am so sorry, guys. All right. This is actually a good one to show thee. Okay. So, one, two, three, four, double bond between carbon number one and two. All right? When I'm looking at this guy over here, there's no symmetry. So, each one of those carbons is going to be a different environment. So, that's going to be four environments. Okay? If I move this double bond and I had one, two, three, four, and I had my double bond here, do you see how there's symmetry in this molecule now? So these ones would have the same carbon environment, that would be one, and these two would have the same carbon environment, and that would be two. So this one would have two environments. So when you would look on the CMMR data, this would have four peaks, this would only have two peaks. And that's how you distinguish between these two. We'll keep doing some more practice because we got like five minutes left. Oh, I think you needed to go. Oh, no, we got more than that. Yeah, because we end at 50. Sorry. All right, we'll skip this CMMR one. All right, this one here, let me draw the molecule out on the board so you guys can see it. So one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And you have a CH3 and a CH3 here. How many carbon environments? One, two, three, four, five, and then these two are the same, six. We're starting to see them now, hopefully. This is something you just have to do with repetition, like the IR spectra. I'm skipping that stuff. All right. How many carbon environments do this have? One, two, three, four. How many carbons are there? Five. So five carbon environments, because there's no symmetry. We'll do this for a little longer. How many carbon environments? One. There's symmetry. I'm skipping all the other stuff. We'll play bingo properly. Oh, this is an ester. Why did I give you an ester? I'll skip that one. All right, this one. <laughs> all right, how many carbon environments? How many carbons are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All the symmetry. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. These two will be the same. 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 Four. Yeah. Do you guys want me to write that down on the paper? Okay. So it's four on this guy. Are we starting to see it now? I think the repetition is all you guys kind of need. I should have made this a gim kit in hindsight, but that's my bad. I need to find my eraser too. All right. Oh, yeah, this one. How many common environments? So this, oh, what did I do here? Did I forget to remove some hydrogens? I think I did. I did forget to remove some hydrogens there. No, it's supposed to be an ester. Or sorry, it's supposed to be um, a ketone. They should have no hydrogens here. Anyway, you guys saw the answer. It was eight. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yes? If I was to take that molecule and I wanted to draw it so there was symmetry, what would you do? 
So this version is eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And that is our problem number three. How would I draw this so that way instead of having eight environments, it has seven? You want me to draw it on the board? That's a good question. All right. I'm going to draw this. Okay. So let's say you had this ketone that had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and the double bond was on carbon number three, right? So that's the one we were looking at on the board. The carbon environments would be eight. I want you to draw the same isomer, but now with seven environments. Draw me a molecule that would show seven. There's lots of answers that can work for this. Go, do it. All right, anti time. All right, so what I would do is I would move one of my carbons to make a, a methyl branch. Mm -hmm. So you could do multiple options. You can do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You can keep the oxygen over there and put the other carbon there. So that way these two have the same carbon environment as one and then two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's one option. Another option is you could have done one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Keep the double bond there. Put the C there. And then these two would have been one environment. See what I'm saying? So you got to play around with how you move your molecule because that can tell you then what your new environments are. Uh, just trying to think if it's easy to do six. Do you guys want to take that same molecule and see if you can find a five and a six? So take the same molecule and see if you can find five or six carbon environments. So take that same molecule, move those um, oxygen, or sorry, move the carbonyl potentially, move the methyls, and see if you can find a five or six carbon isomer. Or should I just say five or six carbon environment isomer? All right. Uh, just showing you guys some more isomers of how I played with that. So I kept the carbonyl and carbon number three, uh, just like the original example. But I have moved, um, again, some carbons around. So now instead of it being a seven chain, it is now a six chain. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yep. So that's six chains long. And then I have seven, eight. So you see, I still have eight carbons. Uh, symmetry wise, these three are exactly the same. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. So same isomer, oh, sorry, I should say a structural isomer, but in this case only has six carbon environments. This one over here, these two are the same. These three are the same. So that's one, that's two, Three, four, five. That one's five carbon environments. And then I was playing with this guy over here, which is a nice long, a couple. I started doing aldehydes. So these three are methyl branches coming off the same carbon. So these guys are all the same. That's one environment. That's my second environment. That's my third environment. These two are the same. That's my fourth environment. That's my fifth environment. This is another five environment carbon. And then this one here, I did two, um, or sorry, I did a propyl band. These two
two are the same, these two are the same, these two are the same. So one, two, three, four, and then five. All right, I hope that makes a little bit more sense.